Those doors will be a sliding shut. of the truck. Please and thank you so much. We're gonna first be making our way into the little Aturi forest. The animals of the forest rely heavily on camouflage for protection from their predators. Keep a close eye out on all of those trees and bushes. Up on the left hand side there's gonna be a tall black and white bird that is the saddle build stork. They get their name for that yellow saddle shape on their beak. Males and females are identical. We tell them we apart by their right eye there. color. Females will have bright yellow eyes and males will have dark brown eyes. Over the right hand side, there's a dark brown animal with some stripes on their hind legs. That is the okapi. Upon first glance, pretty easy to think okapis might be relatives to the zebra. However, they are the closest living relatives to giraffes. Okapis and giraffes have similar skull structure as well as prehensile tongues. Prehensile means it acts in a similar manner to your finger, helps them to grab food, just like you would grab things with your finger out in the wild. Okapis are pretty rare. They weren't discovered by Western civilization until 1901. First recorded documentation of a baby okapi out in the wild was actually not until 2018. Over on the right hand side, those darker brown animals with the horns, those are the bongos. Bongos also have the nickname Ghost of the Forest. They're rarely seen out there in the wild. They are very successful when it comes to camouflaging. They're also very fast. If you notice how their horns are angled backwards, helps them to run faster through the forest. Over the right hand side as well, there's gonna be some lighter brown animals. Those are the greater kudu. Greater kudu are one of the species of antelope out here on the reserve. They're gonna be about 55 inches tall at their shoulder. We can tell that those greater kudu we passed were females because they lacked horns on their head. Male greater kudus, however, will have horns. That's not true for all species of antelopes. With certain species of antelopes, males and females will have horns. the Sapi River. Animals along the Sapi River are very aquatic. Keep a close eye out on that water. We may be able to see a few of them. Over the right hand side there are those smaller white birds. Those are the pink back pelicans. They get their name for the pink skin on their backs. The skin does get brighter during mating season. Those birds are also colonial nesters. They'll nest anywhere between 20 pairs to up to 500 pairs of birds. Over on the left hand side this is a Nile hippo. Hippos are very aquatic animals. They actually just prefer not to swim. And so they will walk or run along the bottom of the water that they are in. We are seeing multiple hippos. A group of hippos is also known as a bloat. Hippos are also able to sleep fully submerged underwater. While they sleep underwater, half of their brain will remain active. The active half of their brain reminds them to wake up, or they're active at the rate responsible for the reflex that has their bodies rise to the surface about once every eight minutes and take a breath of air. That active half of the yeah, brain is also them. responsible for the reflex that allows their body to automatically submerge right back down so that they're able to continue sleeping. That's where the water comes from. Nile can also hear both in and out of water. Above the water, they hear with their ears just like you and I. And below the water, they can actually hear by bouncing sound waves on and off of their jaws. Next time we headed towards the savannah, over on the right hand side, we're going to be passing a tree that looks like it's been flipped upside down as if it has the roots on top. That is the baobab tree. 
Baobab trees will remain leafless for about nine months out of the year to better preserve any water that they store inside. During those dry and droughty seasons, they do become excellent sources of water for animals along the savanna like the elephant, giraffe, and zebra. All of those animals will bite, rip, or shred chunks of the base of the tree out. Once they get that base, they actually suck on it in order to get any moisture. Helps them to stay hydrated when their other sources of water are scarce. Also how that tree gets its nickname, the tree of life. Over on the right hand side, that is a Maasai giraffe. We're able to tell that that is a Maasai giraffe because of the rougher edging on the outside of their spots. Giraffes will grow to be about 18 to 20 feet tall. Just like their relative, the Okapi, they also have those prehensile tongues in their mouth. Those prehensile tongues act in a similar manner to your finger to help them to grab food more efficiently out there in the wild. giraffe to safely clear the rope, then we'll be back on our way. There's going to be some dogs up and active. These are the African painted dogs. African painted dogs are some of the most successful hunters out in Africa. They have success rates nearing 90% and higher. They actually outcompete lions along the food chains in Africa. Lion success rates only reach about 30 to 40%. They're going to be so successful because of how they work together as a pack. Their packs are led by one alpha male and one alpha female. They will chase their prey until their prey drops from exhaustion. Over on the left hand side, there's those dark brown antelopes standing up. Those are the sable antelopes. Coming up on both the left and right hand side, these are wildebeest. A group of wildebeest like this is also known as a confusion. When wildebeest are scared, wildebeest will run. However, all of them will attempt to run in different directions. This does confuse their predators, leaves them unsure of which wildebeest to chase, as well as which direction to run in. Helps them successfully evade their predators out there in the wild. Wildebeest also migrate. Every year they migrate in groups of about 1.5 million. Target anywhere between 500 to up to 1,000 miles. Some more side giraffe over there on the left hand side. Over on the right hand side, there's going to be some dark brown animals with those large horns. This is the Ann Coley cattle. Ann Coley cattle horns look pretty heavy. The road to be about three to four feet long. However, they're not as heavy as they may seem. Inside of those horns is a honeycomb-like structure made of their blood vessels. That honeycomb-like structure helps them to regulate their blood circulation so that they're able to stay cooled down. Right 
hand side, there's going to be some smaller, light brown antelopes. Those are the springbok. Springbok are the smallest species of antelope, fully grown. They are about three feet tall. I also have the ability to jump six feet into the air from a standstill position. They can also jump 13 feet going forward. If you guys are ever out here on the reserve and catch them jumping repetitively, that is known as pronking. which means that their herds are female-led as well as female-dominated. Females and the young stay together in, that's right, woohoo! Females and young stay together in what we call the family herd. Those males will stay with the family herd only until they reach the age of maturity. Once they hit that age of maturity, they do have to leave the herd. They either leave the herd on their own choice, will repetitively chase them away until they successfully get that hit that the males are no longer wanted around any longer. Males will then go on to join a smaller bachelor herd of other male elephants which will reach anywhere between about three to four other elephants or they will live on their own in solitary. on the left hand side. We're going to get a better look at them as I head a little bit more forward. Okay, so notice these African elephants are flapping their ears back and forth. Behind the African elephant's ears are their blood vessels. When they flap their ears, they stimulate their blood circulation. They can cool their body temperatures down by about 15 degrees using this method. Couple more Maasai giraffe coming up. Just gonna hope they don't get in the road this time. Over on the right hand side, there's a lighter brown animal that is the Eland. Eland are the largest species of antelopes. Fully grown, the males will be about 2,000 pounds. Also the only species of antelopes with dewlaps. The dewlap is an extra fold of skin that hangs down from their throat. Helps them to better regulate their blood circulation so that they can stay cooled down. Greater flamingos are the larger of the flamingo species. They'll grow to be about five feet tall. Flamingos are not born pink, they're born light gray. Their pink coloration comes from their diet of brine shrimp, which contains a mineral beta carotene. As the flamingos mature, their feathers also turn more pink. A group of flamingos like that that we just passed is also known as a flamboyance. just a bit deeper into the savanna. Hopefully we can spot a couple different species of animals out here. Over on 
the right hand side. They're way in the far back. These animals are actually pretty rare to see out here on the reserve. I don't see them very frequently. That is a water buck. A water buck is a non-migratory species of animal out in Africa. They actually mark their territory around a permanent source of water. They mark their territory both in and out of water. Their skin also secretes a very stinky and greasy liquid. It'll coat their fur and essentially make it waterproof. That liquid also helps them to mark their territory. Over on the left hand side, I think I can see three, three of them. There's three cheetahs over there. They're really good at camouflaging, which is surprising for their pattern, but they are pretty difficult to see most of the time. Cheetahs are the fastest land animal. They can reach speeds between 60 to 70 miles per hour. They're gonna go zero to 60 in just a few seconds or a couple of strides. They're built for speed, not for endurance. They can maintain those high speeds for pretty short amounts of time. They would be successful hunters because they work together. A group of cheetahs is known as a coalition. When one cheetah from the coalition tires out, another actually just takes over in their place. They'll continue to chase their prey until it drops from absolute exhaustion or they are actually just able to successfully take it down. Cheetahs are also diurnal, which means that they are more active during the daytime. They will do majority of their hunting during the day and instead they will sleep at night. Pretty good look at some of those water buck over there on the right hand side as well, as well as my favorite animals out here on the reserve. Those are the ostriches. Ostriches are the largest bird. However, they do not have the ability to fly. Instead, ostriches will run. They can run anywhere between 35 to 40 miles per hour, making them the fastest animal on two legs. Ostriches are also able to lay the largest bird egg. Fully developed an ostrich egg is about three pounds. Ostrich eggs are also very strong and sturdy. If a grown adult stood on top of an ostrich egg, the egg would not crack. Those are some other water bucks over there on the right hand side. If you notice, they have that white circle on their backs. That white circle helps their young to imprint on their mother, helps them know which water buck they need to be following. We can also tell that those ostriches back there were female because of their light gray feathers. Male ostriches actually have black feathers. If a female ostrich out in the wild actually has to take over the male role in the flock, their feathers can turn black. the warden is supposed to over on the left hand side the warden does have their goats out these are nigerian dwarf goats these are very playful and social animals they play by headbutting one another chasing each other or climbing on top of structures out in their environment this also helps those goats to mature as they mature they are raised for dairy production their milk is used for products like goat milk and goat cheese those animals are also ruminants, which means that there are four compartments in their stomach, allowing them to eat pretty large amounts of whatever they might want to eat. Other animals that we saw out on the reserve that are also ruminants include the okapi as well as giraffes. We have reached the end of our safari. Hopefully we were able to see just as many animals as everyone had hoped. However, if you guys want to see some more animals who call Africa home, here in Africa we do have the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It's a 15 to 20 minute walking trail where you might be able to spot animals like the meerkat, the naked bull rat, as well as grubby zebras. They also have an underwater viewing for our hippo pool. As well as another viewing for the okapi. The walking trail does close at 6.30. Make sure you guys head there before 6.30 if you're interested in checking it out. We're going to be reaching the unload station here in just a brief second. Make sure you guys check your surroundings, gather up any and all of your belongings. 
once again it was such a pleasure to have you guys out here with me on the reserve thank you for joining me my name was shelby i had any of those wilderness explorers aboard you guys are on the simba one If you're seated on the right hand side